So, good day. Our topic is all about trail racing. So, this type of poultry production takes lesser capital and space as it uses quail, which has short legs and small body. So, quail are farmed for their nutritious meat and small eggs. So, let's look at the different breeds of quail. So, this particular breed of quail is what is commonly known as pugo. It is usually found in fields and forests, but it's not suitable for commercial production, which is why many treat it as a pet. Next is negro. Here in the Philippines, there are two types of negro. First is called negro because of its black to grayish black feathers. While the second type is tuxedo because it has black feathers with white spots on its breast. So among the two, tuxedo is the highly productive egg-laying quail breed that's suitable for commercial laying quail farming. Next is silver quail. So uh, the plumage silver quail has combination of black and white color in the eye area and its plumage is white or creamy. Japanese Taiwan, also known as Chinese quail, this type of quail has bigger body and its plumage is brown with the specks of white and gray. The laying span of this quail is up to 12 months. Japan Seattle, this type of quail originated in US. It has black feathers and the breast plumage is similar to those of Chinese quail. This is more resistant to diseases and higher laying span than Chinese quail. But the egg of Japanese Seattle is smaller. So another type of quail is the crossbreed of Japanese Taiwan and Japanese Seattle. They have higher resistance to diseases and stress smaller eggs and are excellent layers at, as it has 12 to 14 laying span. So the first thing to do in selecting healthy stock is look at the body conformation. The feather must be neat and tidy and observe plumage of the pullet to avoid inbreeding. Inbreeding may result to low production rate as one of the parents' breed may come from those breeds with low egg production rate, such as the uh, native or the pugo. The stock should have uniform sizes. The table above shows the ideal age to weight ratio of bullets. So choose pullets within the ideal age to weight ratio to ensure that the pullets are healthy. The next thing to do is to record the parent stock. Regarding the parent stock, it's important to know if you are profiting or not. First, to record is size of eggs. This is the most important factor in determining profit in laying flock. Second is laying efficiency. The flock should have 65% average laying efficiency within 300 days of laying period to be desirable. And lastly, the growth rate or body weight. Pullet with remarkable growth rate can be used for breeding. So we are in the size of the flock. Capital is not a problem in quail racing, but experience is. If still new in quail production, better start small. The ideal flock for beginner is 10 to 15 bullets. It is preferable to gain experience in racing quail than starting big because quails produce, reproduce rapidly. Management. First, you might want to consider in coil racing is housing and equipment. One of the advantages in 
Coil raising is relatively small space that is required for less cost in materials used to make cages. Commonly used materials are plywood, one fourth inch mesh wire, and one by one lumber to serve as framework. For every stage in quail's life, space requirement varies. The following will guide to determine the space requirement for quails. First is chick stage, but, uh, ranging from day one to day 15. For native quail, you might want to need three by three inch cage. And for silver and Japanese Taiwan quails, you need two and a half by two and a half inch cages. As of our growing stage, ranging from 16 days to 36 days, four by four inch for native quail. And for silver and Japanese Taiwan quails, three by three, three and a half by three and a half. From laying stage, ranging from 36 days above. For native quail, you might wanna need five by five inch cages. As for silver and Japanese Taiwan, you need four and a half by four and a half inch cages. These are examples of layer cages used to shelter quails. Layer cages should shouldn't be too high to accommodate any breeds of quails respectively because providing too much space will encourage too much movement and might increase the risk of injuries. Second, you might want to Brooding management. First to consider in brooding management is the temperature. In order to do those quails need shelter and proper temperature requirement. This table will serve as guide for the temperature requirement for quails as they age and grow feathers to keep their body warm under ordinary room temperature. As for day one to five days old quails, the required temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. For six to 10 days old quails, they need 85 degrees Fahrenheit. For 11 to 21 days old quails, they need 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 22 to 28 days, they need 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And last 29 to 36 to market, they need 70 degrees Fahrenheit. For better circulation for, of air in brooding box, air vents should be provided. Cloth or sack is used to screen over the portion of the brooder. For the first 10 days to conserve heat in the brooder and use five to six layers of clean cloth or dry newspaper to cover the mesh wire flooring during the first 10 days. Electric bulb is used to control the temperature inside the brooder and rat proof cages with proper feeds and enough water to, and optimum temperature maintained. Rearing management. The birds are transferred to the growing cages after day 15. It is not advisable to expose the birds to more than 12 hours of light during the growing stage. Brooder or growing box combination can be used for smaller operation, but the space requirement of the birds should be observed. Birds that are healthy and with uniform size should be only transferred to the going cages. 
the small ones should be disposed. The average mortality from the start of the growing period up to 35 days is 1 to 4 percent. On the 35th day, the male birds are already dis discernible by the dark brown color of the breast feather. Female birds at, during these stages can be segregated and transfer, transferred to the laying cages. Approximately 40% of the total population can be chosen up, can be chosen as layers on an assumed 50-50 male and female ratio. The birds that are left can be fattened up to 60 days before they are dressed and sold as broilers. Lights should be restricted from six to eight hours a day during the fattening period. This practice will improve the quality of meat. Layer management. A quail will start laying after 45 days from hatching. This cycle lasts for 300 to 320 days and within this period of laying, efficiency should be maintained at 65%. Some of the major consideration when managing layers are feeding, which will be discussed later, water. A quail needs a lot of fresh, fresh and clean water like other birds. If possible, flowing water should be maintained except when there's a supply problem in which water should be changed daily and the water should must be cleaned every day. Culling. For large scale operation, it is advisable that massive culling can be done regularly, preferably a quarterly basis or even once every four months. Those birds that are physical that have physical defects should be removed, including those which have grown fat or are sickly and are not laying eggs. This latter condition is manifested by the size of the vent and the conformation of the abdominal parts. Removal of waste. Due to the high protein content of quail feeds, quail manure has high ammonia content, which will make the birds uncomfortable if not removed daily. Removal of the manure can be facilitated by placing a manure receptacle or receiver under the cage. Light. Extra light up to midnight can be given to laying quails in order for the birds to consume the feed in the in the true. Furthermore, the weaker birds in the group will have enough time to eat after the dominant ones have eaten their share. Male. Male birds should not be mixed in the laying cages unless fertile eggs are to be produced. If there is an intention of producing fertile eggs for future replacement, the male should be kept in separate cage and should only be mixed with the layers at the time fertilized eggs are to be produced at ratio of 1, 6, and 1 over 3 for the Japanese and American breed respectively. Quail birds are very sensitive to high salt levels in the feeds. The optimum level of this mineral should be kept at 7% and in no case, case and in no case be more than 1%. As a quail racer, they should also manage the feed of the quails. All poultry and game bird feeds are referred to as complete feeds. They are designed to contain all the protein, energy, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients necessary for proper bird growth, egg production, and health. Feeding other ingredients, either, either mixed 
with the feed or fed separately upsets the balance of nutrients in the complete feed. Feeding additional grains or supplements is discouraged. The major cause of quail raising failures is the faulty feeding practice employed by the racers. Most of the quail racers today feed commercial chicken feeds to quails and it is an incorrect practice that should be corrected. Protein requirements of chicken and quails are different. So the use of chicken feeds in quail racing is not advisable. The comparison of the crude protein requirements between quail and chicken is shown in the screen. We could see the differences between the crude requirement of the quail and chicken. That in quails, they need more or they need greater crude protein than in chicken. There are disadvantages of feeding chicken, chicken mash to quails. If quail racers continue to feed the quails with chicken feed, the quails cannot survive for a long time. And it will cause to have a high mortality rate, which can reach up to 70% from day old to 45 days old. It can also affect the growth of the quails and the survivors will not be efficient. It will not be efficient layers. Quails that are fed with chicken mash will have a low product productive laying period. And it does not go beyond six months. Another disadvantage of feeding chicken mash to quails is the very high occurrence of malting, which affects severely the egg production. So malting is a hormonal process in shedding old feathers and making way for new growth. This process is different depending on each species of bird. Certain species, of quail such as the cotornix will molt twice a year due to their high productivity rates. When birds molt, they use a lot of energy to grow their new feathers. They may stop laying eggs for some time or just not lay as often as you are used to seeing. Giving the right ration of feed to quails has its advantages. The advantages are shown in the screen. The mortality rate can be kept low. 5 to 8% mortality rate from 1 to 15 days. Uh, from 1 to 4% 4, 4 mortality rate from 16 to 25 days. 8-12% mortality rate from 36 to 360 days. The production, another, disadvantage, uh, another advantage rather, of giving the right feed is production. Laying efficient, efficiency can be maintained within the average range from 63 to 68% of for a period of 300 to 320 days. Eggs are bigger and more nutritious. For breeders, fertility and hatchability are high. The minimum dietary requirements for protein, calcium, phosphorus, and methathion for game birds are shown in the screen. It is important to provide the correct diet to the birds if you want the desired results. Remember, Birds saved for egg production are fed developer diets, not a finisher diets. Mature laying or breeder birds are fed only laying diets. 
Otherwise, you will see reduced egg production and more thin eggs, thin shelled eggs. Right? Feed formulation is shown in the screen and it can be formulated as, as follows. Feed material should be made of small material, small particles. A five weeks old quail consumes about 500 grams of feed. Quills of six month old consumes about 30 to 35 grams of feed per day. Quills require about 400 grams feed for the production of 12 eggs. The comparison of feed consumption between Japanese and American quills are shown in the screen. In chick stage, Japanese quills consume 7 grams per day per bird, while American quills consumes 10 grams per day per bird. In Japanese quills consumes 17 grams per day per bird during growing stage, while American quills consumes 32 grams per day per bird. And in laying stage, the feed consumption of Japanese quail is 23 grams per day per bird, while American quails consumes 45 grams per day per bird. Also, the, also the quail raisers should maintain the health of the quails. There are no known pathological diseases of quail, although they have some respiratory diseases. They do not spread quickly and the death, is, death rate is very low. Therefore, keeping birds healthy is not difficult. However, the regular cleaning and disinfection schedule should be followed. Cages and Broiler boxes, including incubators and hatchery, can be cleaned with strong water that has been dried in the sun. It is then sprayed with disinfectant, and a vitamin premix can also be added to feed our drinking water to promote growth and improve laying performance of the bird. The vitamin requirement for finished feeds are shown in the screen and you can study it. So the amount of vitamin, vitamin per pound and per ton is vitamin A. IU is the interna is international unit. So vitamin A per pound, 2,000 or end per ton, 4 million, and so on and so forth. Like vitamins, adequate levels of minerals must be provided to all birds. Minerals in breeder feeds are especially important. Laying quail require higher level of minerals for eggshell formation. Chicks require high levels of minerals for proper bone formation and development, although not always required for survival. A trace mineral premix added to diets will give better performance. Trace minerals are the minerals required at very low levels for gr good growth and production. Most feed ingredients contain these minerals, but sometimes not enough of them. Many minerals are included in commercial vitamin premix, premixes. An excellent trace mineral premix is shown in the screen. The premix provides enough trace minerals when added to the rate of two pounds per ton of 
fit. Problems in quail farming. First is head injuries. The result of it is a result of pecking behavior that is typically located at the back of the head and also the neck areas as well. While on the right picture, this is a head injury from bumping ceiling cages that is, that is located more, more towards the top of the head due to stress and loud noises in their environment. Another situation is when during breeding, when the roosters mount the hen and grab them by the feathers and pull on them, causes them to bulb. Except, this is a common behavior during breeding. But if there are too many roosters in, the, in a flock, it may get out of fun. Because of breeding the same hen over and over, it can lead to overbreeding. That also causes the hen to fight back and peck the roosters in the head. Uh, the second one is foot injuries. Or when quail houses have solid, bo solid bottom cages or pens that are fed with wheat based diet that are high in gluten the secretion from the male gland the from the male foam gland mixes the fecal matter and the food may adhere to their toes um another cause of this is podo pododermatitis is associated with due to abra abrasion causes by wire bar floors that makes their foot swollen and Third is vent prolapse, also known as blowout, a condition in which the vent becomes in inverted and a portion of it protrudes outside the bird's body, but it but occurs on a very rare occasion in quails. Common health problems in quail farming: diseases during brooder stage. Brooder stage. First is omphalitis, also known as mushy chicken disease. It has a high mortality on the first week, and most commonly due to infection with E. coli, due to the improper healing of the navel or belly button, and incomplete yolk sac absorption. Transmission of this disease is through poor regulation of incubation temperature and humidity, and contaminated surfaces. The signs of this disease ha is enlarged abdomen and navel is inflamed and moist. Um, there is no specific treatment with, even with antibiotics. Depending on the bacterial type involved, the outcome is still dead because of the, sever the severity of the affected chicks. Uh, to prevent omphalitis in your farms is to carefully control the temperature and humidity and with proper sanitation. Second is aspergillosis, a fungal infection disease caused by aspergillose. A small area of inflammation on the lungs and the air sacs of chicks. It has a high mortality on the second week. Nodules in the air sacs on the peri peri peritoneal serosa in case of aspergillosis in common quills. Transmission of aspergillosis is due to contaminated incubation. Signs of acute form are grasping, rapid breathing, thirst, drowsiness, and inappetence, and Neurological signs, while on chronic form are ocular discharge and wasting. Uh, there are no effective treatment on aspergillosis, but you can but you can prevent aspergillosis through keeping the keeping the quail floors dry, have a good quality litter and feeds, or with the use of triaben triabendazole or niastine. Niastatin has been used in, on their feeds, and also maintaining high standards of hygiene in their premises, avoiding contaminated foods, removing wet litters immediately, and disinfecting the equipment regularly can prevent this disease from spreading. Third is quail bronchitis, an acute, res acute, an acute respiratory infection caused by adenovirus. A rapidly spreading adenoviral disease produces respiratory signs associated with mortality that, that can approach to 100% in less than 2 weeks old chicks, but lowers in 4 weeks old to above 25%. 
the disease is often catastrophic for backyard operation. Um, so when a chick is cured from bronchitis, the immunity is long-lasting and possibly for life, and recovered birds can be retained for breeders. The transmission of bronchitis is spread by direct contact on airborne particles and by mechanical carriers. Uh, the signs of quail bronchitis are respiratory distress, grasping, coughing, sneezing, rails, lacrimation, loose, and while on affect and while, and while in acutely affected older birds have watery droppings which are common. Um, there are no treatments to bronchitis or neither vaccines. Uh, to prevent to prevent to prevent bronchitis in your farms avoid contact between older and younger birds and other avian species new birds should not be introduced to the premises without a 30 day quarantine strict isolation and sanitation providing them with a healthy immune system increasing the brooder temperature by 1.5 to 3 celsius preventing them from piling up on each other to prevent the spread of the disease. Moving on to the diseases during grower stage. Coccidiosis, disease that affects growing quails. Coccidiosis has a mortality and morbidity that can be very high. The disease occurs more often in younger birds that, while on older birds, are usually more resistant to the problem, even if an immunity has not been fully developed. Recovered quails have resistance to specific strain, specific strain they recovered from, but can be infected with other strains. When a coccidia is ingested, it invades the lining of the intestine and causing tissue damage, reduced nutrient absorption, and secondary in infections. The three, the three species of genus Emeria were found and identified as Itsunodai, Iuzura, and Ibacteri. The transmission of coccidiosis is transmitted by ingestion of droppings from infected birds. The signs of coccidiosis is decreased decrease feed and water consumption, loss of weight, huddling, droopiness, ruffled feathers, diarrhea with a tinge of blood, or even death. The treatment for coccidiosis is for is water medication with amprolium or other anticoccidial drugs that will control the disease. Prevention of coccidiosis is during when is when sanitation are excellent, exposure is not usually overwhelming, and the birds will develop immunity without getting clinical signs of coccidiosis. Wire floors can less prone the possibility of getting coccidiosis. The fifth is ulcerative enteritis, an acute mortality in growing quail raised on dirt. It is caused by an anaerobic bacterium primarily caused by Clostridium colinum found in the intestinal tract. Necrosis in the intestine may discrete circular lesions involve or involve the entire segment, usually see deeper ulcers. The internal lesions are seen as small hemorrhages in the inner wall of the lower intestine and the cachea, which coalesce to form larger, yellowish ulcerations. The liver may also contain yellow or gray spots and in the spleen may become enlarged with hemorrhages. Ulcerative enteritis may appear rapidly, causing high mortality within 2 to 3 days, following the onset clinical signs. Uh, the transmission of ulcerative enteritis are transmitted by the ingestion of contaminated droppings, feeds, or waters. The signs are when many of the birds are dying will be well fleshed with feeds still on their crop. Birds that survive several days or weeks will sit and stand up humped up having eyes partly closed, ruffled feathers, watery droppings, and weight loss. The treatment for this 
the treatment for ulcerative enteritis should contain licomycin, <coughs> streptomycin, neomycin, entromycin, and virginiamycin have been shown to aid controlling the disease. The prevention of ulcerative enteritis Recovered quail should be isolated from the healthy ones because it may act as a carrier. Proper management is key to prevent and control the spread of this disease. The pens and cages are particularly are particular, particularly ground or littered runs may remain infected over long periods of times. And with proper sanitation. Next is diseases during adulthood. 6. Cropworm. The capillaria or cropworm is found in the mucosa of the mouth, esophagus, and crop. The body is a tread, the body is tread-like, attenuated anterior, anteriorly and posteriorly, and is 8 to 17 millimeters long, 2 and 60 to 70 millimeters wide, and has two terminal lateral dorsal prominence on tail end. A spicule and very slender and transparent. About 800 millimeters long and a, sp and a spicule sheet covered with a fine hair-like processing. It has a thick and leathery appearance of the crop. Because of the em emaciation is caused by a severe mal malnutrition and starvation. The transmission of crop worm is when a quail ate an earthworm that carries embryos of capillaria. The signs of crop worm is... Are malnutrition, emaciation, severe anemia, inflammation, and thick, inflammation, thickening or roughening in the crop and esophagus wall. The treatment of crop worm is ha haloxone at 25 and 50 milli milligrams per kilo, or at 750 ppm in the feeds for five to seven days has good activity against capillaria species in chicken and quills. Prevention of crop worms Keep the bird's bedding as dry as possible and to frequently change it because development of the worm's egg needs humidity. Strict hygiene of feeders and drinkers are must to avoid or reduce the, their contamination with eggs. For birds kept outside, it, it is advisable to restrict their access to humid environments where earthworms are usually more abundant. Worm population can effectively reduce by fu fumigating, the soil while fumigating the soil with methyl bromide. 7. Is, is the quail pox virus. It is a crusty proliferation on the face and around the beak. Mortality from pox is usually not severe, especially in the dry form. Transmission of quail pox virus is primarily primarily by mosquitoes and other biting insects. Some bird-to-bird -bird transaction may occur through direct contact or in water or feeds. Insects such as gnats or flies may spread the virus, especially when the bird's eyes are affected. General symptoms of pox virus Loss of appetite, dullness, and decrease in fertility. Symptoms of symptoms of dry pox virus. This one is a wart, wart light scrubs and nodules on the unfeathered skin on the head. Symptoms of wet pox virus. There are cankers on the lining of the mouth, throat, and tachea may cause the bird to suffocate and starve. There are no treatments to quail pox virus. But an antibiotic vitamins added to the water may help. Prevention of quail pox virus is the best way to prevent is to vaccination with a quail pox. The vaccine is available at 6 to 10 weeks of an age. Can prevent the cutaneous form, the dry form, and the oral, oral and nasal form, which is the wet pox. The 8th is the bulgy eye, as you can see in the picture. It has bulgy eyes. It is caused by Mycoplasma gallisepticum. There are three types of transmission of bulgy eye. There, are vert there is vertical transmission. Infects infection can be spread in or on the egg. The ability to survive for a long periods in the yolk means that the hatchery and the nest infects 
are infected. Horizontal transmission. Aerosols spread directly from bird to bird when they cough or sneeze. This, this can be from infected cheeks or following the introduction of a new stock. Indirect spread. Possible routes include contaminated dust or manure that is blown in, the, in or on the feathers, clothing, or hair that is walked into the flock. It is relatively common for birds to appear normal through by carrying the disease. When these birds are stressed, they excrete bugs and, and are able to infect others. The infection is usually spread via drinkers and can be passed and can be passed on by infected layers through the egg. The signs of bulgy eyes are coughing, swollen eyes, eye and nasal discharge, slow growth, poor product productivity, leg problems, loss of appetite, and some affected birds may shake their head and have difficulty breathing. Uh, treatment for bulgy eyes are antibiotics like aviolosin will help al alleviate symptoms except in severe cases. Prevention of bulgy eyes is true vaccination that will help the prevention of the infection and true sanitation. Lastly is candidiasis. Candidiasis is an opportunistic mycotic disease of the digestive tract of various avian species. This is also a fungal infection caused by the fungal organism of candida family, which is a highly contagious fungus. This infection almost always affects all chickens in the clutch and will spread rapidly throughout the flock. This fungi attacks the gastrointestinal system that colonizes the digestive tract and elevates the pH to alter the stomach and disrupt the choline layer. The choline is a combination of carbohydrates and protein that is secreted by the mucosal glands. Without this product, the gizzard is left unprotected and cannot aid the digestion as it should. The transmission of candidiasis is commonly developed through the use of therapeutic levels of various antimicrobials or when using unsanitary drinking facilities. The signs of candidiasis are lack of appetite, weight loss, regurgitation, ruffled feathers, crop stasis, listlessness, agitation, diarrhea, depression, white throat, and plagues in their mouths. The treatment of candidiasis is very difficult to treat because the in these infections are very hard to treat in birds because fungi are able to build up resistant to antifungal medita meditation fairly quickly, approximately 4 to 6 weeks to treat the infection which, which gives time to the organism to become resistant for, to the medi medication. Prevention for candidiasis is to check the quality of the water, observe proper hygiene when feeding, and ensure proper ventilation in the facility. Marketing. Marketing is very important factor for successful quail farming business. Eggs are the main products of quail. Raising quails for eggs is the regular production. Um, regular egg producing quails are known as layer quails. Quails lay eggs almost daily. They can lay about 300 eggs yearly, although egg production slowed down from the second year. As a result, commercial quail farmer keep their layer quail for one year. Eggs must be stored in cool, dry place so that um, they can still um, be in a good condition for seven days. Next is, um, this is the physical characteristics and nutrient composition of quail eggs. For sm small scale or backyard quail raising, they are placed in a basket and they are marketed fresh. For big scale or bigger production, they are 
place in a carton boxes with individual dividers. Next, um, broilers or stewards. Um, this is one of the um, marketing of quail, um, quail production. Um, they are dress broilers and stewards or cooled layers are a secondary product and broilers are more tender than stewards and are more expensive. The average food conversion of quail is three is to one. This poor feed conversion efficiency makes a broiler production uneconomical and is therefore treated as secondary product in quail raising. Raising quails for meat is um, Meat produ producing quail are called broiler quail. There are numerous broiler quail breeds available. Although raising broiler quail is not as popular as raising the layers. The average food conversion, uh, feed conversion ratio or the FCR is the conventional measure of livestock production efficiency. Lower FCR values indicate higher efficiency. The formula for the average food conversion ratio is um, the weight of feed intake divided by weight gained by the animal, or FCR is equal to in input of feed all over weight gained by the animals. Next is the procedures in dressing quail. First, the birds are bled. Next, remove the feathers, then scaled in hot water, and then evisceration, evisceration follows, and then the dressed birds are then chilled, then packed by dozen or in kilos. Dressing and packaging is optional, depends upon the um, businessman or businesswoman. In putting up prices, there are things to be considered on. First is the cost of production from day old to 60. This means that everything that you have given to your quail since the day they were born until they are um, ready to be sold are used as a basis for your price. Like for example, those um, feeds that you have used, the water, the vitamins, the materials you have used like drinkers, feeders, and etc. There are... Um, use as a basis for your price next is for the dressing when it and all the things that you have used to dress your quail will be used for the basis of your price next is the storage storage means the storing of your quail eggs or the quails um how you store your quail eggs and how you store your quail like for example um you will build their house um in order to build a house, you will need materials like woods. Those um, things that you have um, uh, that you have spent on buying materials are used as a basis for the prices. Next is the related selling cost. This means that you would base your price to the other sellers or other business owners of quails. Like for example, if they um, sell quails for 50 pesos, um, you would think if you would go for that price also, or you would uh, price your quail for the higher price or the lower price. Next, they say that former are sold at higher price. Next, we'll go to quail production. In quail production, the first one is the cost of production. Like for example, if you have 100 quails, Next, you will um, compute your income. If those 100 quills have produced 70 eggs per day and you want to sell your eggs for 60 centavos per eggs and uh, you would sum up to 42 pesos, 
Next, if you have 100 quails and you have given them two kilos of feeds and um, each feeds, one kilo of feeds would cost eight pesos and 50 centavos, that would sum up to 1,700. Next, for the housing equipment, if you have 100 quails and you want to sell them for five pesos per quail and that would sum up for 500 pesos and that would be your income. Next, other sources of income, the male quails, um, because male quails are not needed when female would lay an egg because a female can lay on its own. Next, for the feathers, feathers are used for decorations, for designing and etc. Next, dungs. Dungs can be sold for fertilizer for the plants. And that's all for the quail production. Thank you.